The family one list is very simple. There are only four elements in it, but this makes it perfect to illustrate what the L apply function is and does. Now the L and L apply comes from the fact that what you get back from it, what it returns is a list. It will in fact consume, that is you can uh, provide as an argument to L apply, lists, data frames, and even vectors, but usually people are uh, feeding it list. The first argument will be the list name, family1. The second argument will be a function. Now this function has to be defined. It has to either exist already or you define it on, on the command line. We'll see an example of that momentarily. So what I would like to do is know the length of each element of this list. And there is a function in R that does that. It's called the length function. So it's really easy. What we get back is something that we can visually validate. The first element, surname, is a single element character vector. That's why we get length 1. Num of child is a single element numeric vector of length 1. Ages and measles are both vectors of length 2, even though they're of different types, numeric and character. But this shows uh, pretty explicitly how L apply works. Okay, now if you if you want, you can store the results my list, and you can prove to yourself that what you get back is a list. Notice we use the str function, we get back a list, and everything is of length one. Now, if we don't like the list structure, I'll just go ahead and show you a little trick. We could say unlist my list, and what we get back is a vector. Okay. That's, that's maybe getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but I just wanted to show you what's, what's possible here. Let me show you a more complex example. If I wanted to use a different function, like the mean function, it's easy. I just put the mean function's name in the second argument, and I press return. Now, before I did that, you probably uh, picked up on the fact that R was not going to like that because we have two elements that are character vectors. So the mean function has no idea how to process that. And consequently, R complains as well as, sh as well it should. It's basically saying, look, I tried to give you a mean, but that's a character element, so um, I'm complaining. But we do get meaningful output for the numeric uh, quantities, for the numeric elements. In particular ages, that is in fact the correct mean. So if you're just looking for quick and dirty results, this is fine. You don't have to worry about it. Now, a more sensitive approach, or one that is probably uh, worth pursuing, especially if you're writing code that you want to give to somebody else, is to maybe write a function that looks at each element and determines first if it's numeric. If it's numeric, then maybe it's okay to take the mean. Now, how would that look? I'm going to write what is known as an anonymous function. The idea is we look at each element, and if that element is numeric, then we'll take the mean. If not, then we just skip over it. And we achieve our goal here. So notice we do not get the warning message. Okay, The, the, the warning message is gone. And what I get back uh, for the numeric quantities is the same as before. But for the uh, character vectors, I just get a null value because we don't even process it. So this works pretty well. Now what I could have done and what, what might be more comfortable and easier to understand for the newcomer is to do this. Instead of trying to write the uh, function as I'm calling it, this is an anonymous function. Notice it doesn't even have a name. That's why it's called anonymous. I could predefine it. Okay, I could come down here and it's a little bit more typing, but I think it's uh, a little, it makes it more obvious what it is I'm doing. Oops. Okay, so I can call L apply now and simply reference the function that I just created. Now it's the same function. Uh, it's, it's, it's no different, and we get the same results back, but it looks cleaner, okay? Um, between the two approaches, when you're first learning R, 
I would suggest you take this latter approach. In other words, you write the function before you call it. You can do the anonymous approach, but it's really confusing to a lot of people. Okay, let's pretend for a moment that the lapply function does not exist. In other words, there is no function to call to um, loop over every element of the list. Now, if you come from another programming language, that probably doesn't bother you so much because you know that you can write a loop structure to process each element. The structure is like this. It's, it's not dissimilar from what you would find in other languages, but um, there are a couple of things you have to pay attention to. Now, we're going from one to the length of the list. So if we look at each element, so again, I'm using the double bracket notation to target the actual value itself. So if that element is numeric, then we'll take the mean of it. You can already see that this is getting longer than we'd like, but we get the same result. So I don't know about you, I would rather do something like this than type out the for loop, but it's, it's, it's available to you if you want to go that route. I've created four family lists. There's the Jones, Espinosa, Ginsburg, and Sousa family. So one thing I could do is create a master list called all fams. And I simply use the list function to do this and I'm going to name the families F1 through F4. Okay. Now there's an easier way I can do this, but I'm just typing it out by hand to go slow so you'll see exactly what it is I'm doing. So I've created all fams. And if we use the str function to see what this object looks like, it's a little more interesting uh, than our uh, example list earlier. We have a list of four elements, wherein each element is a list of four itself. Don't let that confuse you. Now, since each element is named, we can do things like this. Let's say that I wanted to get the um, ages of the Ginsburg family. I could do this by saying all fams dollar f3 dollar ages. Right? So I can, since I've named the elements, I can use the dollar notation. So what if we wanted to determine the average age of the children in each family? How might we do that? Well, if you remember, we could we could certainly use the lapply function to help us there. I'll feed it the all fams list. And so remember, each element is itself a list. So I'm writing an anonymous function here. So x is going to represent a list. So here's what I want to do. I will take mean of x, which is a placeholder for the list, dollar ages. Okay? And I do the L apply, and so I get back the ages for each family. Okay, what if I wanted to get the average age for all families? We could easily compute that visually, but let's use some of the things that we've learned in this video to help us. Well, first of all, notice that each element in the return list is a numeric. So, in fact, we don't really need to store this in a list. We could actually unlist it and turn it into a vector. See what that looks like. And so we get back F1, F2, F3, and 4 in a vector. So you could add up all the numbers and divide them by 4, but since this is a vector, we can easily do that. We just feed this directly to the mean function. Okay, so we see that the average age for all families is 